I'm on a run today. It's a beautiful morning, uh, May uh, 10th, 2020, and today's Mother's Day. So Heather was um, getting a little sleep right now, uh, so I'm going for a run. The kids are watching some Bible Man, uh, and hopefully they let her sleep so she can get a little rest this morning. I just want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day, Heather. I am so happy uh, to do life with you. I'm so happy to be married to you. It's been a wonderful ride. Uh, sometimes a little bit of a roller coaster with its ups and downs, uh, but a huge, huge blessing. We've now been married for almost 16 years. Our oldest is 12, so it's been uh, 12 years, 12 Mother's Days, 12 Mother's Days uh, to celebrate together uh, of doing life, of having kids, uh, and just I'm so thankful to be married to you. And for this uh, little vlog, I want to talk about uh, just the joy of marriage. Uh, I, I know a lot of people um, understand that. You see it in the movies and just the dream of being married and the happiness. It's not always happy. It's not always good. It's not always easy. It's a lot of hard work. And we've worked at it. We've had our ups. We've had our downs. We've had our fights. Um, but it's been a huge blessing. Uh, but more specifically, it's the awkwardness of talking about uh, the intimacy of marriage uh, and, and sex. And We've had different conversations here, living in Germany, a more secular uh, country, a little bit looser views of that than in America, although I hear it's changing quite rapidly. Um, a lot of people, even uh, people in our church, just don't want to hear the idea of waiting until you're married. They want to have it now. And the culture tells us that it is the ultimate happiness to, and um, pleasure is to have um, sex. And uh, while it is good, it's worth waiting for. It's something that you don't have to have right away. Uh, when I was teaching uh, one year, every, all students here in Germany are required to do a pro familia um, sex ed course. And one time after one of the classes was done with it, I just asked them, so do they even talk about abstinence and talk about waiting until you're married? And, I, and they just laughed and said, no, why would you do that? So it's just, it's not even a concept that um, people are aware of and thinking that it's a valid idea. So I'll just briefly talk a couple things for those of you who are not Christians, why you should wait. Um, and then a couple of biblical reasons for those who are Christians of why you should wait and what the Bible has to say. I mean, I'm not a preacher about this. I was listening to a podcast called um, Fight for Your Family, uh, Fight, for, Fight for Your Marriage, Running to Win um, a podcast, and they were talking about that, and he was so much better at saying all the points and everything than I will, so and there's resources out there. But um, I always like to use the analogy of a fire. Fires are great, fires are good, but you make a fire in the wrong place at the wrong time, it can be deadly, it can be disastrous. And just thinking of a kid going for a um, hike or a overnight camping trip with his dad, and he's so excited about the fire, he's so excited, and says, can we make a fire now, can we make a fire now? And the wise dad says, no, not yet, not yet, we have to wait till we get to our campsite, wait till we get to our campsite. And if the kid had his way, he'd be making fires all along the path, which would destroy the um, wildlife, would destroy things, it could even start a wildfire um, because he's so anxious about starting the fire. But when you make a fire in the fire pit, in a correct place, in a fire place, it is amazing. It is, gives life. It gives, uh, it's an amazing thing. And um, sex outside of marriage is starting little fires, little fires all over. And it just um, leaves marks in your life that you can't be changed or undone. Memories that you have. For Heather and I, we're so thankful that uh, we are, we've won't, never had uh, sex with anyone but each other. And it is a freeing thing to have that. So there's no baggage, no comparison, no, oh, that person or that person, am I better than her or better than him? And it's just not having that, those burdens and those scars is an amazing thing to be able to have. And it's why, for those of you who are thinking, wait, it is amazing. Um, I'm not a wine drinker, but from what I've heard, a fine wine uh, that's been aged is so much better than a new wine. Um, people who are always having sex with someone else, it's just like settling with the new wine and not waiting for the fine wine, not waiting for the good stuff. Um, and then uh, it's the tape. Every time you have that connection, you it's like putting a piece of tape on something and ripping it off again. And the more you do it, the less of an adhering, um, binding nature that tape has. And But when you have it with one person, it sticks well and it is, it is good. 
for those who are Christians who want to say, well, we have freedom in Christ, we can do what we want. Uh, in 1 Thessalonians 4, I don't have it memorized, but I was um, reading the other day, and it's saying that we should avoid sexual immorality. Uh, we are supposed to live holy lives. And the fact that this command of living, of not being in sexual immorality, is a command from God. So it's not a human teaching, it is from God, and you're disobeying the Holy Spirit for that. Now, some people argue, well, sexual immorality, it's just talking about adultery. It's just talking about you're married and don't have um, sex with someone you're not married to. If you're not married, it's free. Uh, the Bible actually uses two different words. It talks about adultery and sexual immorality as two separate. Uh, I think, believe in Ephesians, Paul lists don't do this and this. Uh, and he lists sexual immorality and adultery as two separate things in the same sentence. So sexual immorality cannot be talking about adultery if he refers to it already. It's, he's like saying it twice. So um, I would just encourage you. Uh, we've Here in Germany, again, We've had different conversations and we've had people where we've mentioned or suggested or said we don't recommend um, having sex before you're married and people have been angry with us and have shunned us and turned away from us uh, and people who have been angry that we would even suggest such an idea. And again, First Thessalonians 4, it says we don't want to live as the Gentiles, as the pagans, as those who don't know Christ, but we want to live differently, holy lives, pure, set apart. Uh, and to a certain degree, if we're speaking the truth and speaking the Bible and people are angry, as long as we're doing it with grace, as long as we're not doing it in a bitter, angry, evil um, sort of way, and we always want to have our speech filled with grace and truth, um, then it's just showing that we're hitting a hot spot, uh, a sensitive place in the culture. The culture teaches us, shows us, yells at us that sex is totally fine, do whatever you want, um, whenever you want, with whomever, however, uh, whenever. But as Christians, uh, self-control and holiness is something to be pursued. Um, pursue God, pursue holiness. Um, we're, our salvation is not based on it, but we want to follow Christ. If God's giving or showing us a way to live that's better, I would go with his wisdom rather than the world's wisdom. Uh, the world has a tendency to get things messed up and backwards. So, going back to the beginning, Heather, I so love you. I am so thankful for the 16 years we've had together. Almost 16. Uh, this summer will be 16. And I'm looking forward to the next 16, 30, 50 years to, with you. Uh, our goal is to make the 75-year anniversary. Uh, two old people, uh, 96 is the age we have to make it to. Uh, but it'll be wonderful. It'll be a wonderful journey, a wonderful ride. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. Not always easy. We'll have our fights. But honey, I am so thankful to do life with you and to pursue you. And I'm sorry for the times that I get it wrong. Please keep loving me, forgiving me, uh, and I'll do the same. And here's to um, a fine wine that's wonderful uh, and the wife of your youth. I love you, Heather. Happy Mother's Day. And I thank you for those who are listening. Please like, subscribe, comment. Love to know who's listening. Um, I'm sure some people will be completely turned off by this. Others will say yes, amen. And those who are in the between, those who are going, I'm not sure what to think. I'm not sure what to do. I just pray for you right now that you would pursue Christ, that you would see the joy of following God's path, God's ways. His ways are higher than ours. His ways are better than ours. And uh, the ways of man to have a tendency just to make a mess of things. So follow Christ. I just challenge you that. I pray for you, whoever you are. Maybe listen to this um, and that you can have hope. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.